Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, I was fixing to get started because you're the only one here. So I was just going to like do a few examples, but okay. Now we got somebody here. Um, let me ask this. Have you looked at this at all? Um, Not really? Yeah. No? Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Um, okay. So um, then that means that you don't really have any specific questions. You just want me to give you like an overview, like normal? True. Okay. Okay. Perfect. No problem. We can do that. So um, what I'm going to do, um, you actually have two things that are due tomorrow. Um, the 7.R.2, I, I think you'll go through really quickly and I'm not going to spend very much time on that. I'm going to spend most of it on just 7.2, but um, just to make sure that um, we're kind of on the same page, um, I'm gonna and I'm gonna make sure that I'm recording. Okay, I am. Okay, life is good. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of things on this um, seven point um, R point two, and I don't know why this is not working. Oh my goodness, this is not gonna be funny. Hang on just a second. I'm gonna close this out and I'm going to I'm gonna stop screen sharing for a second. And um, I'm going to go back into it because it's not um, recognizing my finger for some unknown reason, which is quite odd. Okay, so now let me try this again. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, let me think for just a second. Let me think what I'm going to do because we're going to have to do something really fancy here. Okay. All right, Shane, can you bear with me for a second? I got an idea. Are you ready to hear it? <laughs> I'm going to grab my computer. I'm actually at my um, job, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab my computer and I'm going to walk down to, um, I say that, let me make sure I don't have an eraser in here. Actually, I'm going to turn this around. So I'm going to turn my webcam on real quick. Um, so that you're not seeing, so we are going to not do that. We are going to stop sharing. We're going to go back to where you can see me. We're going to get real fancy here, okay? But it's going to take me a second to do this. I think it's me. Do what? I think it's me because last time we did this, we had issues too. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is that I was Zooming today on my like on my laptop and everything was fine but now it's not recognizing my finger the problem is is that i don't have a desk right in front of my whiteboard so we're fixing to get fancy and move a filing cabinet here we go you know where there's a will there's a way right you just got to figure out how to do it the good news is, is that this is like the calm before the storm. I'll tell you that, okay? So what that means is this section is not that bad. By the way, do you have a calculator? I'm trying to see what we can see on that. Uh, I mean, I just have my phone. Your phone? Okay. We're probably going to have to get a little fancy with your phone today because you're going to have to do some major calculations and your phone is not going to like some of them, okay? So we may have to play around with that just a little bit and see what we can do. Okay, so can you see that board? Is it angled right? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to write huge, okay? So here we go. So um, 7.R.2, and I'm going to do my best to kind of stand out of the way. Let me see. How's that? Yeah, there's a little bit of a glare where the seven is and up. 
Okay. So note to self, I won't write above that line. How's that? Okay. Is that good? Okay. All right. So the only thing in section 7.R.2 is how to convert between a percent and a decimal. That's it. Okay. So the reason that we have that in there is because you have to do that in section 7.2 and we don't want that to be an issue. Okay. So if I were to give you something that says change, um, we're just going to come up with something, um, 123% to a decimal. When they give you these, don't make it any harder than it is. It really just means change it to a decimal. So all you have to remember, if you look at 123%, that's the number 123. So that really means that if we put a decimal in it, it's right there. And so to move it or to change it to a decimal, all you do is you move this decimal two places to the left. And so that would be 1.23. And so I'm just going to put right here two places to the left. Okay. And that's it. All right. Not too bad? Nope. All right. Now, the other thing that we can do is backwards. Okay. So we can give you something like this and we can say, okay. How about let's change um, 0.45 to a percent. Now, if you'll notice, really, if you'll notice, um, this is essentially backwards. So when you start with a percent and you go to a decimal, you move it two places to the left. When you start with a decimal and you go to the percent, guess what you do? To the right. There you go. Move two places to the right. And then to be technically correct, so if we move that two places to the right, it would be 45. And to be correct, remember you're making this a percent, so you do have to add the percent symbol to it. Okay. Now be real careful on this because sometimes in Hawks, it will have the percent symbol after the box. And if that's the case, then you don't have to have it. All you have to do is put the number in there because it's giving you a percent. But then sometimes they don't have it. And so sometimes you need to input it. Sometimes you don't input it. Okay. Yeah. And really, like literally, this is all that is in that section. So two places to the left, two places to the right. That's pretty much it. Okay. So the harder stuff comes up now. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I think you're going to have more trouble with your calculator than we're going to have um, with anything else. So this is just going to be section 7.2. Yes. So before we do any problems, I'll tell you up front, they're all word problems. So that tends to send people for a loop. Okay. So just know in advance, they're all word problems and they're all going to involve a couple of formulas. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the formulas. We're going to talk about what they mean, and then we'll get to actually a word problem, okay? So your two formulas, um, just in case you're wanting to know what we're dealing with, we're going to be dealing with compound interest. And um, being um, <laughs> what I'm jokingly going to call a grown-up that has a job <laughs> and bills <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, you probably already have an idea of what compound interest is. So compound interest is basically interest that then adds to your account and then interest starts charging on that interest and all that kind of stuff. Think credit card, think mortgage payment, those kinds of things. Um, so there are two formulas that we're going to deal with. The first one looks like this, capital A equals capital P, open up a parenthesis, the number one plus R over N, and then this is the catch on this one. N, T are both exponents. Those are two different things. So when we plug this into your calculator, you are really gonna be plugging in two different exponents. Okay, so that's one place that people can do all the math right, but they get it wrong in their calculator. So we're gonna go through how to figure that part out in just a minute, okay? So, 
And then here's your other formula. It's a lot shorter. A equals P, E, and then once again, it's got two exponents. They're R, T. All right, so we've got A equals P, parenthesis, 1 plus R over N, close parenthesis to the NT power, and then A equals P, E to the RT. Most people, to try to remember this one, call this one PERT. So it just kind of helps you. Um, so if you'll notice, they both have a lot of variables that are the same, but then obviously they're used for different things or you wouldn't have different formulas. So what I'm going to do first is talk about the variables that are the same. And then we'll talk about what's different. Okay. So both of them have a P. So P is what we call the principal. And you may understand this a little bit better than um, um, some other people, but think about this. That's basically, I'm going to put right here, your beginning amount. So Let's say that you went down and you deposited some money in a savings account and you put $1,000 in, that would be your principal. It's whatever you start with, okay? And then A in both of them is what I'm gonna call the final amount. So we'll stick with our savings account for just a second. If you go down there and you deposit $1,000 and you keep it in there for the next 25 years and you don't touch it, well, when you go down there in 25 years, it's going to be more than $1,000. And so that would be your A in this problem. It would be whatever's there at the end of whatever time period we're talking about in the problem. Okay, so they both have an A and they both have a P. You'll notice they both have a T. T is time, but in a very specific amount. It's in years. So if they're really mean to you, and I don't think any of them in Hawks are, but if you were like looking on the internet and you were going to try to find some examples, somebody does something like say, hey, time is 24 months. Don't plug in 24. You want to plug in two. Okay. So you always want time to be in years. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that is the same as R, and it is the interest rate, or if you just want to say rate, you're welcome to do that. However, this is the reason that we did that just a second percent to decimal. It has to be in decimal form. So in a minute when I give you a word problem and I say something like the interest rate is 5.2%, we're not gonna plug in 5.2. We're gonna change it to a decimal before we plug it in, okay? So those are the things that are in common to both of them. Now, if you'll notice that first formula has an N that the second formula doesn't, and then this second formula over here has an E that the first formula doesn't. Okay, so let's talk about the stuff that's different. And then we'll see what we can do. So over here, N. N is basically what we call the compounding period, which is what they call it in um, Hawks and all your literature and stuff. But to be honest with you, that doesn't make any sense if you're a student because you don't really know what a compounding period is. So think this, it's the number of time that they add interest to your account every year. So you're gonna look for keywords. You're gonna look for things like, if we read a problem and it says something like compounded monthly, well then that's gonna mean that N is 12 because they're gonna add interest to your account every month. So that means they're gonna add it 12 times a year. If they say something like quarterly, and I can't spell this evening. How many quarters are there in a year? Uh, the three, mm -hmm. four. Four, there you go. So if they say compounding quarterly, then we're gonna plug in four for N, okay? If they say something like compounding annually, that means that we are only gonna plug in one for N, okay? Because we're only gonna do it one time a year. And then I always mention this one because students always worry about this one. If they say daily, we are gonna use 365. 
don't go grab a you know calendar and try to figure out if it's leap year or whether you need to have 366 or not or anything like that we're just going to use 365. You will find some places online that actually use 360 instead of 365 just because it's an easier number but Hawks is going to use 365 here. Okay so these are all going to be keywords and then I'm going to put a little thing over here. This number E is not a variable. It is a number on your calculator. And so if we are going to be using a phone, to be honest with you, I'm going to have to go grab my phone in a second and I'm going to look and see if I can find it on my cell phone calculator and we'll see if we can find it on yours. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you had a, if you had a fancy calculator, E would actually be a button on that calculator. I'm betting we can find it on the phone. We're just going to look for it. Okay. All right. Now here's the only other thing you got to know, and it's when to use which formula. So my PERT formula, you will only use if the problem says compounded continuously. So I'm going to give you some word problems in a minute. If it says compounded continuously, we use this one. If it says anything else, I don't care what it is, compounded monthly, compounded annually, compounded quarterly, whatever, you're going to use the first one. So always. Which means the first one gets a lot more use, to be honest with you, okay? Because it's used in a lot more instances. All right, so here we go. Let's try a word problem and we're going to try to figure these calculators out. So I'm going to leave those two formulas up here so that we don't have to go back and forth. And then give me a second, I'm going to write this down and then I'll get out of the way. So I just pulled some off of the homework in Hawks so that they should look exactly like you're going to see in your homework. So this one says Amanda invests $5,100 in an account. earning 3.3%. Um, and then we're going to say compounded monthly. All right, so she invests $5,100 in an account that gives her 3.3% compounded monthly um what is her investment after 30 years okay all right so before you do anything on any of these, you got to know, am I going to use the first formula or the second formula? First. First, why? Because it's compounded monthly. There you go. Basically, it doesn't say continuously, right? Okay. So we're going to use this formula right here. Now, in a minute, I'm going to erase this because I only have like a little finite spot to write. But what I want to do now is label everything. So Amanda invests $5,100. So what would that $5,100 be in that formula up there? Principal. Principal. All right. So P is 5,100. There we go. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write this just so we're on the same page. I'm going to write A is question mark. That's what we're looking for. We want to know what her account is in 30 years, just so you know, that's what we're going to be solving for here. Okay. So that's the number one, or like we can just come through here. So earning 3.3%. Okay. So remember 3.3% is my interest rate. So I can write that down. But remember, when we're plugging in my interest rate, we always have to put it in decimal form, not percent form. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it two places. But you'll notice if I move it one, it puts it right in front of the three, doesn't it? So I'm going to have to add a zero in there. So I'm going to be plugging in 0 0.033. 
And then I want to tell you this because students do this all the time. They really want that interest rate to just be two numbers. And so sometimes they'll try to drop that last one because they want to round or something. Don't do that. Leave all of it in there. Okay. So I'm going to put a little star by this because we're going to plug in this right here. Compounded monthly. Now that should tell me what is N going to be in this problem? One. Mm, how many months are there in a year? Twelve. Twelve. So N is going to be... 12. So I'm going to put a little thing right there. Monthly N is going to be 12. And then what is her investment after 30 years? So what is my time going to be here? 30. 30. There you go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take all these numbers, we're going to plug it into that, and then we're going to make sure that we can get the right number out of my calculator. So if I can erase Amanda here for a minute. This is what we've got. So we have 5,100, open up a parenthesis, the number one plus 0 0.033 divided by 12, raised to the 12 times 30 power. So P one plus your rate over N, and then N and T are both exponents. Now that's kind of weird. You're looking at me funny. Got a question? Yeah, earlier the time was always in years. It is. That's why I said one year for the 12 months. So. Oh, okay. Time and compounding period are two different things. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So I'm going to grab my phone because I want to plug it in on, normally I use a calculator. Well, I'm not going to grab my phone because I'll let my kid have it. So never mind. So this is what I want you to do. Do you have parentheses on your cell phone calculator? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you could input it exactly like this for me, it's going to look a little different. One plus 0 0.033 divided by 12 and then you're going to have a caret is that what you do to do um, an exponent do you use a little caret symbol you don't have a caret symbol okay let me think what else you might have um do you have a button that looks like this y to the x power or x to the y power i've got x to the y perfect okay then that works all right so then ignore the carrot, okay? Hit your, after you do this right here, hit your X to the Y button for me. And then open another parenthesis and put 12 times 30 and close the parenthesis. And I'm gonna do it in this and I'm gonna see if our answers agree because then that will make sure that we've got it plugging into your stuff correctly. Oh, good grief. That's what I get for trying to be fast. Okay, what do you get? Yeah, like 2.68. Yeah, no, that ain't it. Okay, let me backtrack. Let me think about this. Okay. All right, we may have to do a few steps with your calculator. We should get about 13,700 and something, okay? So after the 12 and I close the parentheses. Yes. I hit, I hit the Y X. Uh huh. Or X Y. Yes. And open up a parentheses again. Yes. 12 times 30. Yes. But now everything's different. So that would be my first guess. I got some other guesses. 
every calculator is programmed differently. So I'm just going to have to kind of go through a few things and we're going to have to figure something out. So if that doesn't work, I've got a question for you. Can you do, just so that I know the order of operations that your phone is using, can you do just something real simple for me? Do Just plug in the number two, okay. hit that YX button, okay. and five, and tell me what you get. 32. Okay, well that's working. Okay, um, then let's try this. Okay, I want to, I think maybe your phone doesn't like multiple sets of parentheses. So do you see how he, in the second set of parentheses, 12 times 30, we could do that and just remember that number, right? So what is 12 yeah. times 30? 360. Okay, so instead of putting that in parentheses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put 360 in there, okay? So now what I want you to do is do one piece at a time. Ignore the P. Start with the parentheses. So open up a parenthesis. Do 1 plus 0 0.033 divided by 12. And then do your Y to the X button, 360. And tell me what you get on that. Still get 2.68. Oh, I know what I bet you forgot. We didn't plug in the 5100 at the beginning. So now take leave that number in there. Now multiply by 5100. Thirteen thousand seven hundred six. Uh huh. And since you're dealing with money, we're going to need to round it to how many decimal places? Uh. Two. Two, yeah, right, dollars and cents, okay? So your answer should be $13,706, and then if we round that appropriately, that would be 66 cents. Mm. Now, I knew we could get it on your phone. It just might take a while. All right. All right, what do you think about that one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're going to do another one. Do you have a question yeah, on that one? Do what? Do you have a question on that one before we do another one? No, I don't. It was just a matter of <clears throat> figuring out the calculator. that kind of got me a little. Off. Well, I mean, I hate to tell you the bad thing about that is that, you know, different companies make, you know, different calculators and they program them differently and all that kind of stuff. And that's one reason I'll tell you. Go ahead and make sure, especially for the final, you know, you want to be using the calculator. So like if you're going to do the Zoom thing like we did previously and you can just use that, then make sure that you use that right there on all your homework because you can see how it's going to get a little bit more complicated when you're plugging things in and you want to know how to plug it in. You don't want to get to your final and be stumped, basically. Okay, so um, let's try this one. Here we go, real similar, but a different formula, okay? So John invests $5,700 in an account earning 4.5% compounded continuously. What does he have after 20 years? Okay, so John has got $5,700. He's going to invest it in something that gets 4.1% compounding continuously, and we want to know what he's got in 20 years down the road. 
So first things first, you got to know what formula you're using. Is it the first one or the second one? Second one. Second one because of what? It's uh, being compounded continuously. There you go. Okay. So let's run through here and let's figure out what our variables are going to equal and then we'll plug it in. Okay. So John invests $5,700. What is $5,700 going to be plugged in for? Principal. Principal. Okay. So principal, $5,700. Okay. Um, in an account earning 4.1%, what is that 4.1% going to be? The rate. Rate. But what am I going to need to do to that 4.1% before I can plug it in? Turn it to a decimal. Okay. So we're going to do that by moving it two places. And remember one puts it right in front of the four. And so we're going to actually have to add a zero. So this is going to be 0 0.041 when we plug it in. Okay. Okay. Compounding continuously, the continuously isn't a variable like the last one where it said monthly was 12 or anything. The continuously just says, hey, we're using this formula right here. So that's not a variable. And then it says, what does he have after 20 years? So what is 20 in this problem? Uh, the T. T, there you go. So T is 20. All right, so we've got all of this stuff. And then once again, you're looking for A. Um, we will change it kind of in the future, but for all of these problems, you're going to be looking for A in every single one of them. So you're not going to be moving things around or anything like that. Now, like I said, get to section 7.5 and we will, but not today. Okay, so all we're going to do now is come in here and say, okay, A equals P 5,700 times and if you don't put the times that's okay but i'm putting it there to make you realize we're going to multiply it by e which we're going to have to find on your phone in a second and then both of these are exponents so 0 0.041 times 20. now so we don't have the y to the x problem that we had on that last one if you want to grab your phone and you want to just figure out really quickly, what is 0 0.041 times 20? Um, that's 0.82. So if you want to come in here and say, okay, 5,700 times E, and then that's to the 0 0.82 power, then you can do that, okay? That way you get rid of that um, exponent and that parenthesis and all that kind of stuff. So look on your phone do you see a lowercase e button anywhere yes oh yay okay now i want to know the order in which it does this so if you don't mind could you hit e and just tell me what shows up on your screen after the point eight two well, no, no, that's fine. Just hit an E. I just want to know the order that your phone's going to do it in. Does it just show an E? No, it just it says 2.718. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's going to be really good. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do E. Now that you've got that, hit your Y to the X button, or your X to the Y button, 0.82. And I'm going to do this at the same time because I want to know what I want to make sure that we're getting the same thing. Now tell me what you get there. 2.27. Perfect. And then what you got to do is now multiply it by 5,700. 12,941.85. Great. $12,941.85 if we're going to round that off. And they will never tell you, I promise they will never tell you to round it to two decimal places, but they mean it since it's money. And so just know that on all of them, you've got to round it to two decimal places. All right, we still doing okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, let's try the hard one then. Okay, I'm going to erase these formulas because the hard one's a little longer. And it's not necessarily hard, it's just a two part problem, really. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, Joe inherits. 
Joe's lucky. $9,200. Well, I guess he's not really lucky if he's inheriting it. So never mind. I shouldn't have said that. Okay. She has two or he has two options. So I'm going to say he has two account options. He can either invest it at 3.4% compounded quarterly or he can invest it at 3.38% compounded continuously. Which account pays more? So Joe's got $9,200. He goes down to the bank and they say, hey, we've got these two options. Here's option one. Here's option two. So I'm going to come over here for just a minute. I'm just going to do this. Actually, I don't want to use A's. I'll use option one and option two just because our formula has an A. And you know, like I do, everybody wants the one that's going to give them the most interest. Nobody would pick less money. Okay. So he's got to figure this out. So here are the things that you don't know. Nobody ever tells you in here how long Joe is going to invest, do they? No. No, okay. But when you're trying to figure this out, basically you just pick something. But if you're comparing two accounts, then you got to pick the same time for your comparisons. So if I want to come in here and I want to say, hey, this is going to be a real long-term investment. I'm going to put this away for retirement, and I'm going to pretend that my time is 40 years. Well, then that means i got to use 40 for um, account one and 40 for account two also. Okay. But you don't have to, you know, you could decide, hey, I just want to use five. I don't know if five is my favorite number. So I want to use five for time. It doesn't really matter. You just pick something for time. Okay. But the other thing I want you to notice is this. You're using both formulas. Why are we using both formulas in this problem? Because one op is compounded continuously, the other one is quarterly. There you go. That's exactly right. So you're going to have to use both of them. Now, what's going to be the same in both of these accounts? Principal. There's principal. Okay. So the principal, I'm going to just write it up here. Principal is 9,200. That doesn't change. Okay. And then we talked about time. Just pick me something. What do you want to use for time? 10. 10. Okay. Works for me. All right. So we're going to use 10 for time. So that's going to be the same in both of them. But now what's going to be different in them is your interest rate. Because one of them has this interest rate. One of them has this one. And then... This one, since it's compounding quarterly, it has an N with it, and then it's got a different formula. So let's look right here. I'm going to erase this, which account pays more for a second, and let's look at this first one. So we're going to look at account one. So that's my A equals P1 plus R over N to the NT power formula, since it's not continuously. And then what we're going to do is plug in and plug into the calculator. So you already told me P, 9,200. Parentheses, the number one, plus. Now, here we got to be real careful. What's my percentage rate for this one? Uh, zero, three, four. All right, so point zero, three, four. There you go. Okay. And then it says compounded quarterly. So how many quarters are there in a year? Four. Four. So we're going to divide it by four. And then remember, we've got two exponents, and they are going to be four times 10. So for your purposes, since we found it a little easier on your calculator, instead of doing 4 times 10, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to replace 4 times 10 with 40 right there because it makes it a little bit easier for me to do the calculations. All right, so now let's come in here and let's see if we can get this right. So I'm going to start with the parentheses. 
1 plus 0.034 divided by 4. Make sure you close your parentheses there. Use your X to the Y button. And input 40. And then that's about halfway. So give me an idea of what you get when you do that. Uh, 1.40. Perfect. Now, what do we still need to do to figure out what we... Multiply it by 9,200. Perfect. Okay, so I'm times 9,200. And then remember, this is money. So two decimal places. So $12,906 and... 96 Nine. cents. Yeah, there you go. 96 cents. Okay, so let's stop right there. Good on part one? Yes, ma'am. All right. So now what we're going to do, remember, you can't really compare them unless you have numbers for both. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do part two. Okay. So I'm going to erase my formula right here, but I'm going to leave up my 12,000. Okay, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do part two, and I'm going to write my different formula. So that's A equals PE to the RT power. And remember, some of this is the same, so we still got 9,200 for my principal. Remember, this really is the number E, and you're going to use that a lot in the next couple of sections, so you'll get pretty familiar with where that is on your calculator. And then we've got two exponents, but the first one is the rate. So we've got to move that one or two decimal places. So we're going to have 0 0.0338 times 10. And remember, I know that's pretty long, but you do want to keep all of those. You don't want to just round it off or truncate it or anything like that. So then once again, for purposes of your calculator, I'm gonna take 0 0.0338 and multiply it by 10. And when I do that, you're just gonna get 0 0.338. That's just gonna make it a little easier to plug in for, for this. And then what we can do now is we can start here. So we can say E, and then your X to the Y button. 0.338, and you should get 1.402 roughly. So 0.338 on the new button? Uh-huh, because when we multiplied it by 10, it moved that decimal over one spot is what happened. Okay, so 2.718. Uh-huh. Oh, no, hang on a second. You get 2.7? Yes. Oh dear. Okay, so what did you plug in again? Did you plug in E to the 0.338? Probably not. <clears throat> okay. So I, I did the the 0 0.30338 times 10, which is 0 0.338. Okay. And then I hit E. Okay. So once you know that it's 0.338, clear out your calculator for me. Because you're doing it backwards. I, I know I, I can see what you're doing now. Now you want to start with the E. So put E in first. Okay. Then do your X to the Y button. And then 0 0.338. 1.40. Perfect. Now what do we need to do to finish out that problem? Because we've done this. Multiply it by 9200. You got it. So I get $12,899.69. Yes. Okay. So in all honesty, really, that doesn't make a hill of beans worth of difference because you can't take yourself to dinner on the difference between those two accounts. But the question said, which one pays you more money? And so it is that first one that pays you $12,906. So account number one does pay you more money. 
But now, I mean, if this was a real world scenario, like I said, it really wouldn't make a difference because, you know, after 10 years, if all you've got to show is $7 difference, they're really kind of equivalent accounts. Okay. All right. So what do we think? I think I got it. You think you got it? Okay. Um, if you have any trouble on your calculator, just let me know. Okay. So I think that that's probably going to be the most difficult thing is getting it um, back and forth. And when you start working on the rest of your stuff, that button that you are talking about X to the Y, the reason that I keep having you hit that is because that tells your calculator that whatever comes next is an exponent. So that's why we were doing E X to the Y 0.338 because now your phone knows that this is supposed to be an exponent, not just multiplied. Okay, so that's why we've been using this little button right here all the time. And you're going to use it a lot because in all of chapter seven, we're going to be doing exponents. Okay. All right. So good luck. Let me know if you have any trouble. All right. All right. I appreciate it. No problem. See you next Monday. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.